Well, welcome everyone to this uh, third session. We are just in our third session. I feel like so much has already happened. So many people are doing so many amazing things from your congregations and communities. I want to keep getting started today by asking anyone who has a neighboring story to share their story today. We, we've broken into groups before to do this, but um, in our big group today, um, do you have a story of a neighbor encounter, a neighboring attempt, a neighboring um, interaction or conversation, or something that you did kind of as homework over these last couple of weeks as you have been trying to dive into this neighboring adventure. Anybody willing to share a story? It does not have to be spectacular. It can seem <laughs> so normal to you and like, oh, this isn't a big deal. I promise you it's a bigger deal than you think. Well, I don't mind sharing a little God thing. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I've been praying as I walk the neighborhood or drive or if I'm at home and just thinking of the neighborhood and thinking of neighbors, I'm, I'm praying for them. And this morning, God sort of showed himself up. There was a woman sitting in front of me who I didn't know who she was, but when her husband, our worship leader, went and sat down next to her, he's new. So I was like, oh, well, they live 10 houses or so away. So after the service, I introduced myself to her and I said, do you like coffee? And she said, yes. And I said, well, let's get together. So she texted me and she says, how about tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so she's coming over tomorrow morning. And then I also forgot her name. So I had to text other people to <laughs> get her correct name. But I'm like, thank you, Lord. I am so glad to, to bring her together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we can celebrate that. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Where this is this is a muscle that I want all of us to to work on. Where did you in that little story that Melanie just shared? Where did where was God? What was the Holy Spirit doing? Where was God moving? I'd say in helping you make a connection, being alert to that connection. Because sometimes, you know, faces, you see so many people and it's just hard to notice and go, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Notice, noticing, I feel like noticing doesn't get enough credit for being a work of the Holy Spirit because we notice things. I'm ADD, so I notice a lot and it's too much. But I think every time I pay attention to something, God is offering an invitation you want to see this? Do you want to take a step further? So that's great. Where else did you hear God or see God in Melanie's story? That by, by walking, driving that neighborhood, she knew what house that they were at and that she had already kind of had that neighborhood connection to her before she knew the other person even knows, you know, that, so I, I see that I see it there. So you, you mm -hmm. see it in the, the laying of the groundwork before right. so the so that God is present even when we might call it the passive moments where you're just you're, you're quote unquote just praying. You're there's never just prayer, right? But we say, Oh, I was just praying, and God was doing something in her in your mind and your brain, kind of making connections, and then connect the dot later on. And you don't mm -hmm. know when that later on is going to happen. That's great. Great observation. Anybody else? Okay. Any other stories? Can we have another volunteer to tell a story of neighboring or an attempt or? I'll do it. Um, okay. It's a pitiful attempt, but I did it. Okay, so I I went to the store and I like those little, um, our pastor is actually the one that started doing it, I guess in Emmaus and would pull out these little sheets and like tell you pick something, like pick a blessing, right? And you pick it out, you're like, wow, this is so for me. So I've just been doing that. It's kind of like, it was just, it's easy because you're passing along a word of encouragement, like um, 
some scripture. And then you're also like telling them, I'm thinking of you because you've gone up to this person and said, here, have this. This is how I've, I've been, so I've been going through them. And like, if I think of a certain person, when I see that little saying or the scripture, I go and hand it to them and I tell them, Hey, you know, I had you on my mind and I'm, you know, I'm just praying for you. And then I give it to them. I, if they want it or don't, you know, that's between them and, um, God. And then I, you know, I'll just walk away feeling better because I've done my part to just try. So. I love it. Wow. Can we agree that that is not, did you use the word pitiful? Uh (laughs) Yes. (laughs) that's that's not a pitiful attempt that is I like grew up baptist <laughs> right, shame let's say the christian shame is strong yes it is a powerful thing in our culture but that is amazing i've never i've never done that um that sounds bold and courageous to me and also very personal and um vulnerable so i mean where where did people hear or see god in that story Somebody gave her the courage to do it. Courage. So that's true too. I guess for me right now, in seeing that y'all thought that it was more of a deal than I thought it was, so I was like, I'm just ripping pages out of a little book and giving them to people. But as a recipient, like it's just I've come in and it's been on my little works workstation and. I'm like, I needed this today. So I can see God, you know, really whispering to her, so-and-so needs this today. And she's just the delivery person. And she does it so with that sometimes <clears throat> even you knowing. It's just like, where did this come from? And it's blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And I'd say the pre-planning, the thinking ahead to have those with you and knowing what you have to share them with somebody when it's appropriate. I think that's that's God at work. Well, it might be oversimplifying, but <clears throat> when I think about it, there's not a place in those stories that God isn't. I, mean, I agree. He knew exactly what would happen before it did, and he had everybody in the right place, and somebody accepted that nudge. I I really see God in the, and I think this is so, man, this is so important for just Christian life, but neighboring is a part of that. Finding your own way to be you and to be a good neighbor. And so you feel, you know, I won't, I don't want to use the word comfortable because it probably stretches you a little, but, um, you know, your way that so I can do this. I can, I can take a piece of paper from these blessings and scriptures and share them with people. And sometimes it takes us time to find that way. That's our way, but that could be your thing. <laughs> you could do that for the rest of your life. And so many people I know will be blessed by it. And you could become that lady, right? <laughs> the blessing lady. There she is. Who, who, I, have a, I have a really short, cool story that happened this week. So we did star testing in my district on Tuesday for reading. And I have a little one that every time he takes a major test, his test anxiety is so high that he he cries and he goes outside and he throws up, throws up, throws up. And then he's fine and he could do his test. So Tuesday morning, uh, he came in and he came and hugged me and he's already crying. And I just asked him, I said, honey, is it okay if Miss Fox prays over you? And he nodded his head and right there in the middle of my classroom in front of God, everybody, I said a prayer over this child. He quit crying. He didn't throw up and he completed his test. And she didn't get arrested. And I didn't go to jail. (laughs) In education, so that's real probable. Uh-huh. So that's thank my you. little story. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that story. Well, I, I want to remind you all, it is 
sharing the stories and then giving each other this encouraging feedback is sometimes makes the difference between do we keep following God in this thing or do we do we get do we give up? Because it is hard to follow Jesus sometimes. It feels like a risk. It feels it feels pitiful or it feels small or insignificant or we think this just isn't going to make a dent. And then when we share it with others and we get perspective, um, not only do we keep going, but we, we actually have a full tank, right? Or we get we get some of our mind rewired a little bit. And so last week I emphasized the importance of having some regular way to reflect together because if we can't reflect together and encourage each other and learn from each other and celebrate each other, um, then we, we just don't get as far. You know, we need, we do need each other. You all know that. That's why part of why you're in a church and why you're here. So thank you so much for sharing those stories. Those are great. We could keep going. I know. So today I want to, I just want to get you all excited and I, about how present God is in your neighborhood. And I want to expand your idea of the neighborhood to include your church. So Melanie told a story where somebody in her actual neighborhood where she lives was also her neighbor in worship. At another, you know, in the row in front of her. So you have neighbors in your church. Maybe you don't know all your neighbors in your church. Um, then you have the neighbors around the church. So whether you're a rural or urban community, there are properties that are near the church. Those are your neighbors. And then you have the neighbors that are around where you live. And God, you know, we believe in something called prevenient grace. We believe in the incarnation. And what those things mean are that God's grace is already moving and present outside the walls of the church. We do not have to be the, the only ones who bring God to our neighbors or, you know, awaken God. I mean, God is there and God is working. And a lot of what we get to do is discover and join in um, what, what God is up to. I'm going to share my screen and we'll start looking at this a little closer. And I really would love to hear um, your, your thoughts and feedback. Can you see the screen okay? Is the presentation coming up? Okay. God is in the neighborhood. We did that. Okay. So our scripture that I wanted to think about with this may not be surprising about hospitality. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Okay, Hebrews 13, 2, and we know that at least one of the things that the writer of Hebrews might have been thinking about was a time when Abraham and Sarah were in kind of traveling, they were under their tent, and strangers came by that they hosted for dinner, and it, were, it was those strangers who actually were messengers of God, and they were telling Abraham and Sarah that they were going to have a child, and that was going to be Isaac, and that that ended up happening, Right. The rest is history. Here we are. It was a big deal. So first question I want to ask, and I'd love for some actual responses here. How would you define stranger? Simple would be not known to me. Someone you do not know. So maybe don't know their name. You don't know where they're from. You don't know what they're like. What else? Take it deeper. What else might a stranger be? An opportunity. An opportunity, I heard someone say. So stranger is an opportunity. <laughs> it depends on who you're, who you're telling it to, I guess. <clears throat> someone who does things in a strange way there we go so the word strange is in there that's really good so someone who does things 
in a strange way. And of course, strange is um, relative to your own sense of normal, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> we might do things in a way that are strange to someone else, and they do things in a way that are strange to us. What are you doing all this? I like you guys are playing with Someone who's different from you or believes differently than you do. So this includes belief. It includes just saying I, they're not like me. Right. So much in scripture talks about loving our brother or sister. It talks about, you know, the fellowship of believers, the church within the church. It's very clear that this passage is about strangers, right? <laughs> People who are not in your group. And I am certain that you have some neighbors who are strangers, according to some or all of these definitions. Amen? Amen. Okay, so what is hospitality? That word is used twice. How do you see hospitality? Yeah. Hosting. I Hosting. Okay, so... One way to think of hospitality is that we become the host and that somebody comes to our place and we host them. Kindness. It's hard to think of hospitality without there being some kindness. If it's welcoming. A welcome. So let me, let me offer that in addition to what we think of as invitational kind of um, hospitality where you are the host and you welcome people, that there's actually also missional hospitality, which would mean missional being the one who goes out, the one who is sent, and hmm. being a good guest is hospitable. If you've ever had guests who are good guests and had guests that are difficult guests, you know what I mean? It makes a complete difference in the experience. So finally, what are who what are angels? Angels, they're they're chubby babies with wings, right? <laughs> That's true. Uh pretty sure they're terrifying creatures because after every appearance of an angel yes. in the scripture, everybody has to say, no, no, don't be afraid. Get off the ground. Don't worship me. Yeah, awe-inspiring, uh, terrifying, definitely used around angels again and again. And what 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 are angels' role? What are the, what do they do? To bring a message, yeah. Give information. Yes. They are bringers, they bring messages. They don't just um put fairy dust. It's not just a fairy dust thing. It's like news, usually pretty life-changing news, right? It's never news like who won the Spurs game. It's like major life-changing news. So thank you. Any other thoughts on that passage that are burning inside of you that you need to share? They're defenders. There we go. Angels are defenders. Okay, so there's a little bit of protection, physical mm -hmm. shield. And the captain of God's army in first Samuel. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a mili yeah, sometimes there's some military language around them. Great. Thank y'all very much. Good stuff. The angels also attended to Jesus after his 40 days. Yes. So there were helpers. Helpers. And, and, and in one of the gospels, they ministered to him during his time in Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Ministers, right. Very good, man. Y'all are good. So what I want, what I want you to hear in your own words, these angels, we can live like they are present among strangers or are the strangers in our neighborhood. 
that there's this sense of expectancy, anticipation, possibility that God's messengers, protectors, ministers are actually the strangers that are not in our church, that are different from us, that are not, that that don't believe what we believe, that are not like us. Based on the this is based on the data that we just put together. Do you think have you thought about your neighborhood and your neighbors that way? And and if not, why not? Probably because of the sense of permanence. You know, if you're in a neighborhood, you have homeowners and home renters, and it's hard to imagine an angel with a mortgage. Yeah. I mean, when I hear stories of angels appearing, it's more it's more transient than that. Okay. Passer, pa people passing through. Right. Okay. We'll get answers. Thank y'all. I do, I do want you to imagine though, that whether it's angels or whether it's um, a person that's not an angel, <laughs> that God's messengers, God's protectors, God's ministers might be among our neighbors. And that if we are people interested in what God has to say, and how God wants to minister to us, then knowing our neighbors and connecting to them is essential to following God. So this is this is a perspective. And one of the main shifts in perspective that this offers is if we always think about our neighbors as people who do not have the God that we have or cannot give what we can give, then there's always a dynamic of you know, we're the church and they are the people not yet in church. And there's some truth to that. We have something to get. We have a community. We have a table that is open. We have we have people who can love. We have the good news of Jesus Christ. But I think it's so important. We also think of our neighbors as God's own gifts, not only to us, but to the whole community. This is a shift. It's a different way of thinking about things. So I want to talk about becoming guests. This is kind of a shift on being hospitable. But I think about the passage in Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sends out the disciples and says, when you enter a house, first say peace to this house. So they're sent off in pairs to these different villages, and they are told to go into the homes of the people who welcome them. So they become guests. And it's from that place of kind of a home base where they heal and they preach the gospel and cast out demons and do all this radical stuff. But I want to talk about what it would be like for us to become guests to our neighbors in our neighborhoods. So one of the things that that leads us to is having to respect someone else's house rules. Do you have any house rules? I'm curious. Anybody in here ask you to take your shoes off if you're in your house, just as a courtesy? We got any shoeless? Nobody's a shoeless house? No carpets. Okay. I still, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I think I'm I find myself like 10 minutes into a visit at a house. Everyone's shoes are off except for mine. I should have taken my shoes off. Where's the bathroom? There's always that question. When you, when you are the guest, it feels different. That's that second shift, becoming vulnerable and dependent. And we just, th this is something I feel like as the church, we would much rather have people come into our house mm -hmm. and we would be generous hosts and be very welcoming but it, but it is another thing to go out and even stand in someone else's yard or walk up their driveway and then knock on their door or come to their party 
or even go into the community and be a part of a community event. I get, I'm an extrovert and I'm a pastor and I get anxious sometimes in social situations where I'm not in control of what, of what's going on. Can I get an amen from, I mean, anybody? Amen. Some of y'all are great with this. That's awesome. A lot of us, it's kind of, it can be nerve wracking. But let me offer that, that there's actually a spiritual in, invitation in the experience of being a guest, guest. We also become students, meaning we are always observing and we're learning in real time what someone's turf is like, who they are. And then the people that we're, we're visiting who are the hosts are going to be different. They're going to share differently and express themselves differently and offer things differently than... Um, than if they were the guest. If I'm the guest, I'm a lot more reserved. I'm a lot more keep to myself and just be careful not to disrupt the ecosystem. Whereas if I'm in my own environment, I move more freely. Is this making sense about how mm -hmm. being a guest is a little different than being a, being a host? Absolutely. Trying to get back to full screen here. Did I lose y'all? No. There we go. Where am I? There we go. Well, we didn't lose you, so. Where do you have an opportunity in your church to be a guest? I mean, you be a guest in your community. Perhaps going to functions like at the high school, we don't have kids anymore, but when neighbors have kids in plays and stuff, we'd like to go and support them and make a little presence. So Divine, did it? Did y'all ever make it or still thinking about going to the baseball games that are near the church? Oh, Divine. I was, thought, I was like. Yes, yeah, some of us made it last week to several games. Okay, so that is a great example of having to be a guest, right? You're that's not you don't own that. That's not the church's property. Any anybody want to experience say what it was like to be the guest at those baseball games? Yeah, my good I missed it. I'm sorry. It's fun. It can actually be a lot of fun to be a guest if it's a great environment and. Like I like going to wedding receptions where somebody else paid a big bill for me to have a great meal. <laughs> it can be great to be a guest. I'm a little bit of a moocher. You get to see kids playing. If it's a nice day, you have a place to sit. Awesome, yes. Um, other places you could be a guest as a church. Anybody ever gone as a couple church members to a a city council meeting or a school board meeting? There's a place to be guests. Don't bring, not to bring pickets. That's not what I'm talking about. No protest, just to actually be a good guest. And any other thoughts on being a guest? What about in your neighborhood? In your neighborhood? So not the church, but where could you be a guest? where you live. There's an occasional block party that there's kind of a little core group of the homeowners association that likes to pull something together in the main cul-de-sac at the bottom of the hill. So it's good to be representing and you know, it's good to remember who you represent when you go to these things, to take your perspective as a member of your church, as a Christian, uh, and go to those things with that context at front of mind. That's right. Um, our church has been setting up um, a little booth at our market days. Um, I think we've done a couple. And so, you know, just being out in the community and then um, out of our, you know, 
comfort of our own church a little bit, but out in the community is definitely experience and being a guest yes. within the community. I think, I think this little thing can really shift the relationship that a church has with their community. If 95% of the interactions you have with people that are not in your church are at your church, that, that's going to change the relationship. That means you're always the host. You're almost always the one that's kind of setting the house rules, whether those rules are generous or wonderful. You know, you kind of have the power. And being the person who is a guest makes you more vulnerable, but it also makes you, to me, a better uh, observer and a better learner because mm -hmm. you find out a lot more about your community when you, it's almost like your antennas are up, right? When you're the guest, you have to be more careful. It takes a little more energy. I know it takes energy to host too. That's a different energy sometimes, but going out and being the guest um, can teach so, so much. And then there's the opportunity for people to see you as a guest. It puts you at their level. It helps them to maybe be generous to you. Maybe people have been waiting to have an opportunity to bless you. I bet most people in this Zoom room would say, I would rather be the blesser than the, the blessee, right? I'd rather help someone than be helped. Put people in a position where they can be a generous host. Jesus does this a lot, right? Have y'all noticed Jesus does this? He does this all the time. He's like, I'm coming over to your house today. Yeah. Or he's at the Pharisee's house. He brings his disciples along. Part of that was the ancient culture. In ancient Palestine, that was a cultural thing. But there's also a theological thing going on there. That being the guest and being a good guest is transformative for us and for our hosts. This is a big, big part of neighboring. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts where we go on to, uh, to talk about treasures in our neighborhood? Nope. Okay. So I will say this next little bit here has maybe been among two or three points in my six or seven year neighboring journey where I've really in ministry been focused on being neighbor is this idea of finding God's treasures. So I want to bring you back to this theology, this idea that God is in the neighborhood, that God is with people, and that God has grace and grace is God's gift of love, God's gift of wisdom and abundance and goodness and beauty. And that this grace is just waiting to be discovered like treasures that are so often hidden. And I firmly believe that around each of your churches and each of your homes, God has treasure that is waiting to be discovered and celebrated and enjoyed. And the very first thing we have to remember about this, and this is the most important one, is the treasure is the person. It's not what they have. It's not what they can do for us. It's not how they relate to our agenda. It's not whether or not they come to our church or what they can offer. It is who that person is. And for those of you who've been able to practice neighboring a little bit, you know this, you, that the person themselves, getting to meet a new person who is a unique image bearer of God, who has their own personality, their story, they are a gift. That relationship is a treasure. But then as we go deeper, as we get to know someone, the next thing that they bring to us is their perspective. So if you have ever been in your church and wondered, what do we do next? Or how do we reach our neighbors? Or how do we, you know, what's going on in our community? How do we, what are the pain points? What are the things people want? Our neighbors have the answers to those questions. They have a perspective that we need 
as people who care about people and want to know what God is up to. So their perspective on the world, their perspective on the church, on God, on life is so, it's such a treasure. So you might find out from neighbors around the church treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are that are like um, keys, major keys for the life of your church. And they're just sitting there waiting to be discovered. I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I should have had one ready and, and don't at the moment, but um, but I have stories of, of people in their church getting to know their neighbors and realizing like, oh, well, we built this whole parking lot or had this whole program and didn't even realize that there was this need right around our neighborhood. Somebody who's lived there for 30 years has been paying attention to something we weren't paying attention to and um, gives us wisdom and insight through their perspective. The next thing, and this one gets me really excited. People around your church, around your house, and in your church, in your church, have gifts and skills that are awesome. So just like in your church or in your family, you have people who can make that casserole, you have people who can knit that sweater, you have people who can build a wheelchair ramp, you have people who used to work at an amazing job who used to, who are educators with children. When you start adding the gifts and skills that you can discover as treasures around your church and around your neighborhood, it creates this abundance of skills and abilities and interests and talents. And we're going to we're going to do a little activity in a minute to help you experience how how real this is um, and how possible it is in our neighborhood. And I kind of mentioned this last one, wisdom. That's just the history, the people that are that are there in your neighborhood. And so my perspective has become that pretty much everything we need to be a thriving congregation, to be a church that's connected in our community, God has provided the treasures. And I don't think God is trying to hide it from us because um, God is cruel or joking with us. I do think that God is drawing us to connection, drawing us to love our neighbor. And when we do that, we also find out what we need to know and we find the gifts and skills that we might need to be a thriving church. Let me stop here and just ask if this makes sense and if there's any questions. Yep. Nothing, really? Come on. Quick studies. What's that? Oh, your quick studies. Yes, you are quick. a very intelligent group. <clears throat> I mean, is this, do you feel like this is the perspective already that you have? A little bit? So when they did that, we can do that. And they did that 150th anniversary thing here. You know, I think that that is the perspective that we have. It's just tapping into it. I mean, we know what you're saying. We know that. We know that information. We know that the people next door are creative and people next door are talented. But it's just making yourself tap into it and 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 bringing it into the community. It's difficult. That is hard. But you're going to help us do it. Yeah. I'm asking you to try to start because it is hard and we need each other and we need the momentum that we bring as a community into this work. All right. Let's do a little activity in this group that we have here just to, th this is going to be one of the tools. This is a tool of asset-based community development. So it was developed by community developers, but it is an awesome church activity because as church people, we see God all over things that uh, that maybe people who aren't church people didn't know, even know God was there. And we're like, this is so God. Um, it's called Head, Hands, Heart. Head, Hands, Heart is the name of this activity. And what we're going to do is we're going to split into pairs. So Divine and Beville, you guys will mute us so we're not too annoying for you. And you're going to get into pairs three different times. It's a little complicated, so try to help me here. Um, you're going to have three different conversations. 
with, so one conversation with one pair, then you're going to switch and meet somebody else, have another conversation. And in each one of these, all you're doing is sharing a gift. And you're asking the other person to share a gift of the head, of the hands, and the heart. So you're getting three different gifts from three different people. And then we're going to come back and report those. And I'm going to put them on a whiteboard. And we're going to see what kind of treasures are hidden right in our midst right here. And some of you know each other really well. And you're going to discover things about people you've been going to church with for years you didn't know to just draw out this. And this is an activity you can do with your neighbors. You can do inside your church. Um, and it's pretty fun and not too awkward, right? It's not, it doesn't, it's still hard to do if you don't know somebody, but it's a very easy thing to do. Right. So this, do you need a gift that we have? Say it again. Do you need a gift that we have? Yeah, you're going to ask the other person, what's a gift of the head? And so they're going to ask you, what's a gift you have? And if you don't ask it, you can just volunteer that information. But yes, you're going to be sharing your gifts. This is hard. Another thing we've been taught in Christianity sometimes is like, don't celebrate yourself. You know, don't talk, don't talk about yourself. That's prideful. I, mean. I, I want you to, I want you to celebrate who God has made That's you. Funny. And I want you to celebrate that you uniquely have gifts that are awesome and beautiful. So let me just describe these real quick. A gift, a gift of the head is something that you know, that you know well enough to talk about it and teach someone else, okay? So it's the gift of knowledge, of wisdom that you can share with another person. And it could be anything. The one I shared last time I did this is I could help anybody here. I've already mentioned the San Antonio Spurs, but if you wanna know about Victor Wimbanyama's first year as a rookie in the NBA, I have been following that journey very closely and I have lots of information up here in my head about Victor Wimanyama and his first year as a spur. Is that, I don't know what good that is, but it is a gift of the head that I can share. Okay. So it can be that mundane or silly. A uh, gift of the hands is it is something more tactile, right? Sw swinging a golf club, making banana bread, building a birdhouse, but it could go further than that, you know, fixing a lawnmower, whatever it might be. And a gift of the heart is something that you know, that you care enough about that it's led you to action. And so something you care enough about that it's led you to action. And my little bitty one is that I've, I'm just barely getting involved in the school board elections where I live um, just by getting a sign. And now maybe going and volunteering at a polling station about, about the school board. So um, I care about that. It's a gift of the heart, okay? Um, does everyone understand those three things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do so, we do we do one with each of the conversations? So we end up with three total or all right. three with each right. conversation? It's just going to be three total. You're not going to end up with nine. Okay, good, good. You're not going to end up with nine. All right, I'm going to try to break up. We've got two, four... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got seven individuals on Zoom. Can you all take care of this in your um, in your groups that are on their own there? Beville and Divine, y'all are good? All right, I'm going to let y'all loose. You can turn our voices off and then give me a second for those. Let me set up some breakout rooms for the rest of us. Take notes if you need to take notes on the gifts that you discover, because we're going to come back and talk about the gifts that we have. So I've got one, two, three rooms. All right, so can I get Michael and Angela? Do y'all want to join room, room one? Dana and Melody, can y'all be in room two? And Melody and then Melanie and Stacy, can y'all be in room three? Okay. And just do head. This is the head, first one. Michael, go to room one with Angela.
And then Dana, can you go to room two? Dana, can you hear me? Virtual endowment, move to one. And then Melody and Stacy, Melody, move to three. And then Melanie and Michael, virtual endowment. Melody and Michael. Melody three. Melody and Stacy. Oops. Well, I, I think I, I did, lost my. I, I tried to put y'all in a new room. Did it not work? Well, well we weren't done, but I also lost Michael completely. Oh, uh, from, you, you were in Michael in your first group? Yes. 
Okay. See, I thought it was a malfunction, so I came back to you. Okay. Can I put can I put y'all in room one together for the second one? And you weren't Angela, you weren't able to finish? No, we 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 didn't complete yeah. our conversation. But yeah, the, there's a function on breakout rooms where you can put a timer so people know that they're running out. Were you not and you weren't getting messages from me? No, just just closed. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was trying to send that. And oh. actually, Mel Melody and I had one more gift as well. Yeah, you're just supposed to talk about one of the gifts. And See, she it. said that, and I thought I knew better. Oh. So there you go. We're finished. Okay, then, yeah, we got to that. Oh, you did all three too, Angela? No, well, no. If we were only supposed to talk about head, then we did that. Okay, good. So can y'all talk about hands, Dana and Angela? Yes. Do you want me to put you can, do you want me to try to put you in a room? Probably. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put you in room. Oh, this is strange. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna put you in room one. Well, it, is is it inviting you to join room one? If you go down to break up? Not yet. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know how to fix it because it says it says you've been invited. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I can actually click more and then join breakout room. Let me try that. Yeah. Yep, let me try it. Beville, y'all are all done. Melody, were you able to have two conversations or? Yes. Sorry, it said, uh, someone told me that it didn't broadcast my warning. So I'm sorry if you didn't know that it was coming and you just got moved over to another room. Oh, it was fine. We figured it out. It's no problem. <laughs> and y'all have not had a chance to do gift of the heart. Right. Okay, let me get everybody back because I think it didn't work for some people. Angela, were you able to have a short conversation? Yes, we did. And so we're still, y'all are still trying to do heart. So who have you not met with? That's the thing I was not able to keep track of with my math. I didn't meet with Pastor Mike. Oh, cool. Let me put y'all in a room. 
I've never met Melody. Right. I haven't met uh, with Melanie or Angela or Pastor Mike. All right, Dana, go down to more and I'll try to put you in room three with Michael. Okay. And then Michael, you'll have to choose to be in room three. And then I, who who said they, I'm sorry, I missed the other one. I haven't met with Melanie or Angela. Okay, I'm going to put, and then Melanie and Stacy, have y'all already met? Yes. yes, but I haven't met with Angela. I know Angela, but I haven't met with her. And Melody hasn't met with Melanie. Right. <laughs> oh. Seems only appropriate that we meet. <laughs> All right, you should be invited to room two, Melanie and Melody, and then room one, Angela and Stacy. Under more should invite you. Is, Is it not under more? I see more, but now it's not. Uh oh. It doesn't have the rooms to go to like it had the other time. Let me go. Yeah. No, it's there you go. Now they, go. they should be open. Just gifts of the heart, just a couple minutes. All right, Beville and Divine, can y'all hear me? All right, everybody's gonna be coming back in a minute and we'll share. So if you want a reporter, Divine, for being able to hear well, I don't know if you listed them out or each one of you wants to share, but we're gonna actually be sharing the gifts that we discovered. So all those gifts of the head and the hands and the heart, we're gonna compile them on our whiteboard and just get a look at all the treasures that we have. So however you want a best way to report that from your room um, would be great. Beville, can you hear me? Hey, Beville. I just gotta do this until they see me. Beville. Oh, well. <laughs> Hello, we're done. <laughs> All right, we, we can thank God we will not do this activity on Zoom ever again. And this was, this was, if you can do it on Zoom, man, you can do it in your church, you can do it on the streets. This was hard. I think you did a great job. It was fun. Yeah, you did, it was fun. It worked, it, out. Fun. it worked out fine, do not worry, it was fine. It was a little bit speed dating. It's kind of a little speed dating thing. <laughs> speed except, dating. But you're just trying to find out gifts. You're like completely platonic, wanting to learn the gifts. All right, Beville, are you with us? Okay, so now we're gonna whiteboard this and we're gonna start seeing all these gifts come to life. If you missed a gift, that's okay. But what I'd like you to do, and we'll just go from one person to the next, I would like you to report on the gift of the head, the gift of the um, the gift of the hands and the gift of the heart that you learned about. So you're actually talking about someone else. And I am going to show you the whiteboard. Somehow I lost Pastor Bell. 
Do y'all see him? I don't, I don't see him. His screen is not on. So hopefully he'll be able to join us again. Sorry about that. We were in the, you know, little sidebar room together, but. All right. Can, you, can you all see, can you all see our whiteboard? <laughs> Working on it. All right. Let's have somebody report. And again, you might not have them all. What was the gift of the head you learned about? And we'll stick with you for all three or two or however many you had. So. You want to? Let's I'll go. do it. All right, Dana, go ahead. What'd you What'd you learn about? Well, I we have a musician, and I I'm, you know, I don't think I'm supposed to be envious, but I actually am a little. Any um, specifics on the musician? On what instrument? I didn't even ask, but I know that that person directs the choir and also teaches music a, as a profession. So that's pretty. That's pretty significant. It is significant. Awesome. What an amazing gift. Did you learn about a gift of the hand? I did. Um, we have a person that cooks every day, wonderful food, and the people that she's cooking for know they're, they're lucky. So we've got good food, gifts of the hand. Did you get a gift of the heart or we're not able to do that? I did. People in need. Reaching out to people in need and, and um, sharing. All right. We're gonna do this kind of rapid fire because we got even just a small group like this, we got a lot of gifts. So who's next gonna share their gifts? I will. Go. Uh, knowing, being knowledgeable about the mouth and dentistry. Wow. Mouth oh. and dentistry knowledge. Well, teeth, mouth, everything about the mouth. Awesome. Dentistry hygienist. Um, second is um, gift of, the, of music. And third is welcoming to uh, people from foreign lands. Mm, that's good. Good one. Awesome. All right, we're up to six gifts. Two over. We got a little bit of overlap right now. So, what's our next? Um, our All next. Right, I can go. Go for it. Um, organization and decorating for head. For hand, helping others, um, just with whatever the hands can do. And then the heart was a listener. Hmm. All right, keep it rolling, awesome. Gifts of the oh. head, somebody share. I'll go next. Uh, I have a Rangers fan, a Texas Rangers fan. Gifts of the hands, I have someone who knows how to care for and ride horses. Oh my goodness. And lastly, I have someone who takes uh, their heart, draws them, even though it's difficult, to greet new people and be the smiling face of their church. Awesome. Wonderful. This is beautiful. All right. Who's next? I can go um, for the gift of head, uh, knowing about plants. Yep. Gardening. Um, for the gift of hands, uh, crafting. And gift of heart, a uh, listener. Got a couple listeners. Okay, now who, who wants to go next? Keep it up. Y'all are doing awesome. Uh, I'll go. Uh, for head, I uh, had uh, one that uh, speaks Spanish and has, has many years of learning and speaking. Awesome. And then and the gift of education. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Can we get our, is that everybody who's kind of on the, has their own screen? Now we're going to Beeville and Divine. Pastor Mike didn't finish. Oh, he didn't? Mike, did you give a gift to the heart? Yeah, but I uh, did not write it down. <laughs> so it's it slipped my mind <laughs> doesn't have a gift of memory yes yeah, thank you well thank you for sharing those anybody else we need we need our beville and divine folks already okay michael you want to go first yeah, i'll go first head is music hands helping with lawn did you say lawn lawn yes lawn. okay and then students. 
Awesome. Um, I have scripture, like knowledge of scripture. Yeah. Um, hands is cooking for people, making good food. Like yeah. And heart, um, thoughtfulness. Wonderful. Keep it up. Y'all are doing great. Faith. Go ahead. Faith. Who am I, who am I describing? Hands is me. Painting. Oh, yes. Is this like art or like um, home home painting? Or Watercolors. Both? Watercolors. Thank you. And then Michael for part. What was the last one? Michael Hart or Michael? Hart. For his family. For his family. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, my head was, I have to put my glasses on. No. Uh, science and Bible. Oh, yeah. The science and Bible and how they go together. Um, Michael's hands, do he, anything mechanical he can fix and, um, heart. Oh, a heart for worship and, and leading worship and, and our church. And then the head was, um, a knowledge of mechanical things. Yep. Which was also his hands. But, and then um, the hands was the ability to make rice in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And a heart for our vulnerable neighbors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It's so great. Yes, I'm just curious. All right, I think that was everybody from Beeville. Yes. Yes. All right, Divine. Katie, you want to put a spreadsheet together? That was kind of a joke because she's got a lot of people and she's good at spreadsheets. <laughs> okay. Um, the, one, the, the thing that I learned um, on one is that they have the gift of foreign language and culture. Nice. Her head. Um, her hands, she is well versed in art and ceramics. Nice. And heart is she is a caregiver for her mom. And even though they might have not been close, she does get great joy from it. Amen. Thank so you. Good. Anybody anybody else from Divine? Go ahead. Anybody? Oh, okay. So um, I learned that um, we have a gift of organization for the head, a gift of um, listening and caring from the heart. Okay. I don't remember the hands. <laughs> That's okay. Anybody else from that room? Um, there was uh, one who works with dyslexic kids. I won't be able to spell this. <laughs> and for hands, knows how to play the piano. That's a big tip. And for heart, um, Tries to do kindness projects for a year. Or, oh, it's for a year. Nice. Uh, <laughs> like to find a need and, and to do kindness. Right, project. right. To find an actual project and meet that need. Any any others from that room? They had one that has a photographic memory for head. <laughs> Somebody's got gift of laughter in that room. I just want to say that's a, that's a gift. 
gift of the hand is they're really crafty. Crafting? Uh, know how to tend goats. Goat mean goat care? Yeah. Ectomalis. What was that last one? Ectomalis. Oh, tamales. Thank okay. God. <laughs> okay. Is that everything, Divine? Yeah. Or most yeah. of it? Okay. Folks, can you just look at... Isn't this ridiculous? <laughs> and that, you know, that took us... That took us about 20... 20 to 25 minutes to go from the conversations, learning about how to ask the question and then getting it on a board. And we were, you know, it helps that we're all in the same room and it helps that we've all been trained church people, <laughs> follow directions, but um, anybody can do this. And, you know, one thing I've done in my neighborhood that's I'm going to keep this. So we'll still have this and we're going to look at this next week. So I'm going to go ahead and um, close the whiteboard. Um, how do you feel when you look at that list? I want to meet everybody in person. So I heard. I heard you want to meet the people who have those gifts and talk to them more about it. What else? What else did I hear? Well, we have a lot of gifts to offer as a group. And that would be the same in the church. Right. There's, I always get a sense of, I didn't realize we had this much to offer. There's a lot to offer. What about, we'll talk about this next time, but did you notice any possible connections between gifts? Sure. Start thinking of maybe that gift could complement this gift. So what I was saying is something I do with my neighbors, um, and I've only done this a couple of times with some beautiful results, and it's taken some courage for me to do, but I'll just meet a neighbor and I'll say, what do you love to do? And I'll learn about pickleball or sailing or dogs, or I'll hear about a grandchild or education or baking. And when I start to take the notes and realize these are things that people love to do. They don't feel recruited or that their arm is twisted when they're asked to do them. These are things people want to do generally. They are, who, they are what make us who we are. And so it starts to flip the way we think about God's economy. So instead of coming up with a need and then getting people to meet that need, we start with what we have and we, we let something grow out of what God has provided, the treasures that exist. And that's a hard shift we'll talk more about. So what I want you to do before we go, we always have an action item. And I want to remind you of your action items coming up here for, we have two weeks before our next meeting. So these next two weeks are very important for your traction. They're very important for you to feel like you are getting this in your, in your muscles. So this is your action two weeks coming up, 14 days. Hopefully, even if you're very busy, you'll have a chance to do these things in the next two weeks before we meet again in May. Cinco de Mayo is our next meeting. We did head, hands, heart. These are your three decisions. Who do you want to try head, hands, heart with this week? Someone from your church? Someone in your neighborhood? All right. So who is that going to be? When are you going to do it? Um, how are you going to record it? And then I want to make a note. Make sure you tell people why you're asking these questions, because otherwise it's a little strange. And so maybe you're, you know, let them know your agenda and say, I'm trying to learn about what people love to do so that um, I get more encouragement or I get to know you better or I'm keeping track of it for our church to just see, do we have people that love to do the same things? Do we have people who love to do things that 
others in our community love to do. Uh, sometimes I'll use the word directory. I don't know if that's a bad word at your church, directory. It could be based on church directories. I don't know. But you can say, I'm beginning to put together a directory of the gifts that are in our church or in our neighborhood. Would you be willing to share the things you love to do? I like that. So this is one of the items you could do over the next two weeks if you feel like you're making good progress. If you feel like you still haven't made that neighbor connection that you want to make, that's still scary to you maybe, over the next, you have two weeks to, to do that. So keep trying to do that if you haven't made a neighbor connection. If you have made a neighbor connection in your neighborhood, try to make another neighbor connection in your neighborhood. Keep doing that. Let me slip to the next slide here. Oh. The other thing you can start to do is start getting things on your calendar. So let me give you an example. Divine, I'm picking on Divine because I they're who I thought of. I saw that in Divine, maybe it already happened, but it looked like the volunteer fire department was having a chili cook-off in April. Does that sound familiar to anybody? I think so, but I don't know if it's already over. I know. I saw some things that looked like it was in February and then some things that said it was scheduled in April. I don't know. But my point is, if there are community events <laughs> that you could go to with a couple other church members and be a guest and be a part of that, consider doing that, getting that on your calendar. If you have a summer event or a late spring event or end of school year event, and there's ways that you could start to invite neighbors to an event, Get that on your calendar. If you don't have something set up for your neighboring team to continue beyond this six weeks, because we're halfway through right now, get that on your calendar, okay? So those are your kind of homework items. Does everybody have plenty of stuff to do over the next two weeks? I want you to, I, I, yeah, go ahead, Melanie. Um, when you said, tell them, you know, ask if you could share this information, are you talking about trying to find out what they might do for the church? Or are you talking about just in general, what are their gifts and just filing it away in our head? I, think, I guess, are you asking them to volunteer at church basically? Or I think, I think that is something you need to decide uh, either as an individual or as a team before you get the information. Because if you are gonna be, if you do wanna use it as a file at the church, then use it as a file at the church, just let them know. But if it truly your intention is, I don't know my neighbors and I want to learn about what people love to do here at the church, then you're not saying you're going to use it again. But I do, for me, I like to say in my neighborhood, at least, I'm trying to help connect the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm finding out what people love to do. Is it okay if I put it in a directory and let you know if other people love doing what you love to do okay. or if somebody ever needs help? So they get, usually people get that pretty quick. But it is a little bit of a disclaimer, but it's honorable to do that, if that makes sense. Very good. No, thank you for the clarification. No, and I think I like that because if you approach people as we want to enlist you in something, sometimes people kind of like, eh, you know, let me not volunteer. But if you just say, we just want to know what you like and what you love and make connections based on that, you know, I think that it, the, the rest will come about more naturally. Yeah, and it happen, It does happen well in a mixer setting like this. You're going to get a lot more information more quickly that way than if, um, than if you're going door-to-door. -door. But I've done it door-to-door -door and learned some amazing things. And I connected people who like to stamp collect. I've connected people who like to go out on the lake. And they, didn't, they lived four down, horses, houses down from each other and didn't know that they both loved woodworking or something. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I've got like four different people with wood shops in my neighborhood so that we could have a wood shop group. All right. Well, I have kept you long enough and we need to pray. What I'd like you to think about is what is God calling you to do as we go? So some options. <laughs> is God still nudging you to make a neighbor connection? And if God is calling you to make a neighbor connection, we want to pray for you. Is God calling you to have a learning conversation with people in your church or with people around your church about what they love to do? Or is God calling you 
to read some of these books and to kind of get more, if this is still not really getting you excited to kind of find the spark, what I want you to identify. So just take, we're going to have one minute of meditation and one minute of prayer here in a second. So what is it God is inviting you to do? Where do you find the spirits nudging? You don't need to say anything. Just take a note. Let us pray. Well, God, you are with us always. You fill our lives. You fill the world with your glory and your grace. You're with our neighbor. You're with us. In these next two weeks, God, would you guide us? Take us by the hand. Help us make connections. Help us make our calendars. Help us have conversations. And help us to know that even the steps that seem the smallest, the steps that might seem the most insignificant, if they are steps taken in your love and by your guidance, they are nothing short of miraculous. Help us to encourage each other and find strength in you as we go. We love you and we praise you. Thank you again for teaching us what it means to love and to be a good neighbor. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Y'all are amazing. I'm super proud of everybody. Any uh, closing questions or words? Are we meeting on Mother's Day? Is that Cinco de Mayo? No, that's the 12th. May 12th. We can adjust if we want to adjust. I'm okay adjusting, but that would mean that I have some material that we need to push out. And I don't know if people have the ability to push out another week. Because I think I had it scheduled as a son and a husband, which is pretty, pretty bad on my part. <laughs> what if I can go another way? But I don't know if y'all can. Well, can you just. Um, he's going to send it out. He'll send it out to. I might watch him. I don't know what George has planned. So I don't know. Probably not. We'll get back to you. And I'll put it in an email and try to get some feedback. Please give me your feedback on the Mother's Day question um, when I ask you about it so that we have an idea. All right. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.